Okay, so now we're going to do an example. It's actually a practice problem from your book, 3.1. And I'm going to copy exactly the uh, circuit. And it's three resistors and two current sources. One of 12 amps and one of 3 amps. Of course, this is not realistic at all. Usually, the milliamp source. Actually, usually you wouldn't have current sources at all. This is 2 ohms, 7 ohms, and 6 ohms. So the first thing we do, now, oh, and the question is find the node voltages. So usually if you see a circuit with um, one big node, so the largest node in terms of currents coming in and out, is the one I'm interested in as a reference. The other two nodes are the ones that are going to give me the equations for the node analysis. So I'm going to call this guy V1 and this guy V2. One thing to notice is now once I have the node voltages there, V1 and V2, obviously I don't know them yet, I can tell you the 2 ohms times the current is going to be equal to V1 and 7 ohms times the current on it that flows through it is going to be equal to V2 because of my reference node. So my reference node, in my mind, I'm thinking V equals 0. So this is where the black part of the multimeter is going to be. So everything else I'm going to measure in reference to this reference node. So this really, I'm thinking here, V equals 0. It's going to simplify my equations tremendously. So I'm going to pick current directions here so that when I want to know, for example, the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor, I'm going to write V1 minus V2. And across the 2 ohm resistor, I'm going to write V1 minus 0, which is V1. And across the 7 ohm resistor, it's V2 minus 0 equals V2. So that let's solve it. Basically, we're applying nodal analysis because the interest here is to find V1 and V2. So I'm going to do just two equations, Kirchhoff's current law. So KCL on V1, all currents coming into the node are the 3 amps, equal to the currents getting out of the node, I2 and I6. So I'm calling this guy I2, this guy I6, and this one I7. Sorry here for that. And then KCO on V2. Here, I6 is coming in to the node I7. Oh yeah, is out. Oh dear. Here. Plus the 12 amps. So, so far so good. I'm assuming you all remember this. Deal with the voltage. Uh, not the voltage, the, the Kirchhoff's current law coming in and out of a node. So this hole here is one node, this hole here is the other node. I have two equations and it looks like I have more than two variables because it says I7, I6 and I2. But really now all that's left to do is write these equations as a um, function of the voltages. So we only have V1 and V2. Let's go for it. So first I'm going to write here on the side, even though you, you don't really need to do this, but I2 equals V2 over 2, I7 equal, oops, sorry, not V2, it's V1 over 2, I7 is V2 over 7, but really it's V2 minus 0 over 7, and the other one is V2 minus 0 over 2, I mean V1 minus 0 over 2. Finally, I6 is the most, six, is the most interesting one because it's this voltage minus this voltage divided by the resistance. So it's V1 minus V2 divided by 6. These are Ohm's law, only from Ohm's law. And I'm going to substitute these guys into my first equations, my, my first two equations there. These guys, call this A. And I'm going to go back to A there. 3 equals V1 over 2 plus 
I6, which is V1 minus V2 over 6, and the other one is V1 minus V2 over 6 equals V2 over 7 plus 12. Now we just find V1 and V2 from these two equations. The first one I'm multiplying by 6 and getting 18 equals 6, no, maybe 3, I think. 3V1 plus V1 minus V2. Now it's a good time to brush up your Kramer's rule stuff, but for now I'm even going to do this with just substitution. So V2 equals 4V1 minus 18. And I'm going to substitute this into the other, to the other equation. Actually, first I'm going to multiply this by, maybe I'm going to multiply this by 42. This guy multiplied by 6. So this is going to 7, V1 minus 7, V2 equals 6, V2 plus 12 times 42, 4, 8, 4, 2, oh, 5, oh, 4. And I'm going to use this V2 here, except, let me simplify a little bit more. 7V1 minus 13, V2 equals 504. I hope you can read it here. 7V1 minus 13 times 4, V1 minus 18 equals 504. So, 13 times 4, 52. So this is minus 52 plus 7. I'm going to call this minus 45. Minus 18 times 13. Okay. Four, five, eight, one. 234, 234, and this is plus 234 equals 504. Now, V1, I already know it's going to be negative, it looks like, here, because it's 504 minus 234 divided by minus 45. 504 minus 234. 270. 270 divided by 45 is 6. I'm going to keep the signal. Is minus 6. Okay, we're almost there. V1 equals minus 6 volts. And now minus 6 times 4 is minus 24. Is that right? Oh man. Minus 6 times 4 is minus 24 minus 18. V2 equals minus something. How much is this? 18 plus 24. 18 plus 24, 24 minus 18. It's, two, it's plus. It's minus 42 volts, I think. So basically we found these two, it took a long time, not sure why, but basically we found these two voltages or nodal voltages. This guy is minus 6, this is minus 42. You can send me an email if you have questions, is uh, my GMU email or through Piazza, you can ask a question. See you guys.